Hey! So, um, I almost forgot to do the video today. I just remembered, thank God. Because uh, I would have already broken my resolution, and that's just not a good way to start. Um, so the poem I'm going to read today, it's definitely a work in progress. If I stumble, which, I mean, I stumble anyway a lot of the time because I'm not very good at speaking, but um, if I stumble during this poem, it's probably because I'm still, like, if you can see, writing all over it and, like, making changes constantly, and uh, I don't know if I like it or not at all, but, I mean, it's a poem, and <laughs> I'm uh, kind of in the midst of a bit of a writer's block today, which, I mean, it's fantastic because I have three creative writing classes. Anyway, you don't need to know about my problems. Um, so this is called Queen Midas. Um, and it's obviously a reference to um, King Midas and the story of how uh, somehow he became able to turn everything gold uh, with a touch but uh, killed his daughter in the process. So Queen Midas um, kind of turning the fairy tale I guess on, the, on its head a little bit. Um, it's based on a poem that I had to read for class. Let me actually bring it up, and I'll actually read a bit of the poem that I based it on. Probably not the entire thing, because I think it was pretty long. Um, it was one of my prompts for class, for my poetry and performance class with Willie Perdomo, uh, which is, you know, my favorite class. Like, I can't even, like, I can't even express how amazing that class is. We've all become really close friends, and it's just a really great thing. Um... Uh, where am I trying to find? Hold on, let me. Tr I'm like scanning through it. Okay, I guess this is mostly what inspired it. Um, there's also a line that I pulled from a, a different poem by the same person. I forget who it is. Uh, Hagedorn. I guess it's her last name. Um, the line I pulled was um, even when she sleeps she howls. And um, the poem that I took it for, I took um, the idea I guess from was called Stigmata. Um, and I'll read a section of it. Her crown of thorns, dissatisfied with her role as a spectator, bored out of her gourd, she causes scenes and creates spectacles. In one version, a black man, also painted gold, hangs dead from a tree. It's a provocative image, a crash course that's got tongues wagging. Is the black man in collusion? A performer or a life-size mannequin? A sellout or a visionary? Exactly three feet away, she has set a table for one with a lace cloth, plate, fork, Knife, soup, soup spoon, teaspoon, goblet, and gold lame napkin. A shimmer of gold dust sprayed on everything we see. The hangman's noose, a ghostly, a ghastly chandelier. Um, so I guess that's the basic idea. And then there's another line, if he's painted gold, how are we supposed to know he's black? Um, and the answer to that within the poem is, you'll know. Um, so I guess it's kind of a mixture of a bunch of things. Um, but yeah, I'll read it now. <laughs> After all that build up, and it's not even that great, so sorry. Um, so this is Queen Midas. She turned everything gold with slim yellow hands, lips that clinked together and tasted like blood, always. The lightest, jaundiced eyes, she touched a painting she thought might be of her sister for a fleeting second. When her somewhat smile was covered by a sheet of guilt, she lost all her worth. Queen Midas was guilty. We listen to her at night. Even when she sleeps, she howls. The asphalt beneath her feet turns slick and slippery and cars slide off them and into rivers where she can't follow for fear of poisoning the city's water supply. Her clothes became chain mail, but she didn't want to be protected or weighed down, not her. So she dropped them at the feet of a poor man and he scoffed and asked for copper. At the rate she was going, it would be more valuable anyway. So she tried to flick him a penny, but gold is heavier than copper, and she hurt him. She hurt him. She fell in love once. She loved a man who was all color, his skin so dark it was the blue of ripe grapes, and green eyes, and the soles of his feet worn to the color of deer hide. 
and she stubbed her callous toe and he caught her. And she cried the clearest of tears, and they clinked when they hit the yellow brick road, but she had already turned all the ruby slippers gold. She watched all the colors drain from him, and she wondered how anyone would know he had been black, and she wondered how anyone would know what the rainbow looked like when she touched it. So yeah, um, I took out the last two lines, which were originally, and the townspeople looked at her and told her they wouldn't hang him now because they were the same exact shade and so belonged together. Um, because obviously the original poem dealt in race, which is not something that I understand very much being from such a small town, you know, anybody who's watching this uh, who has ever been to Bloomsburg knows um, that everybody's white. And I mean, I'm a corner Japanese, but let's be honest, that's not really adding much um, difference in uh, my skin color or anything like that. Um, most people don't see me and think, oh, she's Asian. Um, but I guess I wanted to say something about, I don't know, that, I don't really know. I'm trying to say something deep and complex that I probably don't understand. But if any of you did, please leave a comment and tell me about it. Um, yeah, have a great day.